Hello and welcome to the latest episode of The Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, this afternoon, uh, after the last couple of weeks of uh, um, tasting some rather excellent rums, uh, I think it's time to get back to tasting some whiskey and um, we're going to be tasting some American whiskey. Now, um, as you can probably tell from the, uh, the title caption, we're looking at the Buffalo Trace Experimental Range. Now, uh, Buffalo Trace have been experimenting with various different cask types and mash bills and things like that ever since, well, for, well, for decades, according to their website, about 20 years ago. Um, and they've got somewhere in the region of 2,000 odd experimental casks, I believe. Um, and back in 2006, they decided that they were going to start releasing some of these casks. And the first release in 2006 was three different types of um, uh, experiments. The first was uh, a French oak barrel um, with the staves that had been dried for uh, air dried for 24 hours. Um, they bottled something called the twice barreled, which basically was um, Buffalo Trace whiskey aged in uh, obviously a new American oak barrel for eight years and eight months and then transferred into another new oak barrel um, and f the final the third release in the first releases was uh, called the fire pot barrel which apparently was a barrel that was heated to 102 degrees Fahrenheit for 23 minutes so quite I would imagine a heavy char on on that particular one so um, and then each year since 2006 I believe that they've released again like I said different different experiments uh, and um, I've, I must admit I've not tasted very many of them, They're, they appear to be a bit like um, rocking horse doo-doo and pretty damn rare it has to be said and um, so when I had the opportunity to taste um, three of the current release um, for uh, the, the whiskey magazine back in July I that, was, you know, that was good stuff so um, anyway so the 2014 release comprised of um, two experiments um, the first one was uh, a proof experiment. They took their um, mash number one, which I believe is the fairly low rye content mash. I think it's about 8% rye. And they um, did a proof experiment. And so they did um, uh, four bottlings, one at 90% proof, one at 105% proof, one at 115% proof and one at 125% proof, uh, which equated to an ABV, if you'd like to know these things, of 51.3, 59.9, 65.6, .6 and 71.3. Now, um, as far as I'm aware, I think the mash number one is the, 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 the kind of general mash bill that they use, certainly for Buffalo Trace, and I think they also use it for the Eagle Rare range, and I think the George T. Stag. So, um, it's kind of like their, their house recipe, I suppose, for want of a better word. So, And the second part of that uh, experiment was called the Warehouse Floors Experiment. And they took casks from three different uh, uh, floors. Now, I'm guessing and that the experimental warehouse where they house all these kind of things, like pretty much a lot of the uh, warehouses in, uh, in um, Kentucky, you get obvious changes in temperature, humidity, that kind of thing. Obviously, the, the top floors are going to be um, a lot warmer than the, the lower floors. You'd expect the uh, bourbons to mature quicker, probably get more uh, loss to the angel share, uh, and things like that. So you would expect the, the, the character of the, uh, the bourbons to be somewhat slightly different. And, of course, most bourbon distilleries will blend batch, batches from the various floors to kind of get an overall kind of character. You don't want, um, you know, changes in the character of, your, of your, your standard bottling and all that kind of stuff. And no, we're not going to talk about the standard Buffalo Trace bottling. Honestly, I'm not going to say a word. Anyway, so, um, so like I was going, back to today's tasting, we're going to be looking at the three bottlings that comprise the uh, Warehouse Floors experiment. And um, I'll, uh, Stop waffling and uh, introduce uh, the, the lineup then. Again. 
Right, okay, so um, they're all 12 year old bourbons, they're all bottled at 45%. The first one comes from uh, floor number one, um, which uh, I'm guessing is probably the lower floor. Um, according to the distillery, this is, should be delicately flavoured, subtly sweet, with a mild oak character. We shall see about that. Um, the second one we'll be looking at is from floor five. Uh, according to the distillery, this has a sweet vanilla character, light caramel and light wood. And finally, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the barrel from floor number nine. I don't know how many floors there are. Uh, nine could be the top floor, possibly, I don't know. Uh, apparently this has a very deep aroma with a roasted nut sweetness and green pears and figs. So there you have it. Um, I'm assuming that obviously the higher up the floor is, uh, the quicker the, the, the um, maturation, uh, the, the, the quicker that the wood kind of picks up um, the wood characters um, and so I would expect obviously from the upper floors uh, being aged for 12 years I expect it to be a lot more woodier than the uh, the barrel aged in um, you know the, the lower floors so we shall see I think this is going to be really really interesting and um, I think I'll shut up and um, kick off with uh, floor number one then Right, okay, so let's uh, let's see what the nose gives us on this then, shall we? Well, I think they're quite right. It certainly has um, an elegance, a delicacy, some dusty oak, um, some lovely sweet corn and sweet violet notes. Lovely depth to it. Um, yeah, I would say the sweetness is quite subtle. There's a, there's a little bit of coffee. Just a, a smidge of uh, of herbal rye, but it, it's always amazed me how such a small amount of rye, relatively speaking, can have quite a big impact upon uh, um, the whiskey. And it's certainly sort of giving it that that lovely herbalness. But yeah, it's quite it's quite light, it's elegant. But that dusty spice note is is really very very nice. Um, very appealing. It's got a nice grip to it. Interesting finish. Almost kind of reminds me of cola sweets. Um, Quite a lot of coffee, quite a bit of tannin in actual fact, um, but the tannins are quite soft. Um, it's dark, um, it's got that sort of dark toffee, molasses kind of thing happening. Um, some nice corn, um, the alcohol is certainly sort of adding a bit of piquancy and sort of balancing that corn. There's a little bit of rye, not very much in actual fact. Um, it's less noticeable than it was on the nose, it's certainly... Um, on the aftertaste, I, I now get quite a bit of that uh, that herbal, lightly herbal rye. Pleasantly spicy, elegant. Yeah, it's not too sweet. It's got a nice. It's it is edging more towards the drier end of the spectrum. Certainly, the wood tannins seem to be giving it some some dryness. Um, and obviously, twelve years in uh, a fresh American oak cask is going to give you a fair degree of tannins. Um, but it's the more not the more sort of the, the oak is is not as creamy it's the more sort of drier coffee tannins um chocolate you know that kind of thing um hmm, it's pleasant it's a nice it's a nice whiskey um and uh let's see we'll see how they kind of progress on from there so yeah nice nice starter i think Okay, so on to the cask from floor number two. Now I didn't get an awful lot in, the, in this particular sample, which is why there's not a lot in the glass left. So anyway, let's see what the nose gives us. Oilier. In, that's my, the initial impact is more oilier, denser, less fragrant. It's um, again got quite a nice rye, 
very herbal, more herbal than the um, floor number one. Less tan, I'm getting less tannins, less coffee, less chocolate, which is surprising. The, the wood is certainly lighter, I would say. Um, maybe it's got more of an edge to it, maybe. Um, but like I said, it's a lot oilier, um, a lot denser, heavier spirit kind of character. Um, not so much in the way of sort of dusty spice that, that we found on the uh, floor number one. Mm. It's kind of, it feels to me more, more of a kind of component part. I mean, in essence, they're all component parts, really, um, because the reality is, like I said, they would, in a, they would have been vatting together the, the barrels from the various floors to to get a continuous product. Um, and it certainly feels like that on the nose. Like I said, it's it's, it's oily. It's it's sort of these are the sort of casks you'd probably add to give you that sort of weight, that mouth feel, that oiliness and um, depth. About. Again, the spirit is quite oily, but I'm getting a lot more charred oak character. Not so much gritty tannins like there was on the floor number one, but it's more more, more charred oak, um, more toasted vanilla, a little bit of caramel, toffee. Um, yeah, a little bit of bitter spice now, right on the uh, on the finish, uh, and carrying on into the aftertaste. Um, it's possibly a little bit more harder work, I think, this particular one. Um, and again, it does feel more like a component part and than the one from floor number one, which you could actually drink as a, a as a kind of bourbon in its own right, and you'd say, yeah, that's that's a lovely bourbon. Whereas this, I think, is just not quite so easy going. It's a, like I said, it's it's it lacks a little bit of sweetness, and it lacks a little bit of um, spiciness. You know the sort of dustier spice, um, which you would have obviously got from vatting in, you know, other casks. So, um, so again, really interesting. And um, I mean, these these particular bottlings are not particularly cheap. I mean, I think um, I've had a look around, and certainly these ones aren't actually available. You can get hold of the um, uh, proof experiment bottlings, and they're around about sort of seventy pounds a bottle. I think for a fifty cl. So. So they're not cheap. So if you wanted to do this little tasting, you know, then you'd have had to have bought them. Um, you know, you could be sh shelling out sort of like close to sort of what, I don't know, three hundred quid for this little tasting. And um, uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, I, I, yeah, don't don't get me wrong. I don't think this is a this particular uh, bottling uh, from floor number five would be one that I'd I'd really want to drink all the time. But it's it's an interesting insight, nevertheless. I think. Right, okay, and so on to the bottling from floor number nine. Let's see what the uh, nose gives us on this. Oh, now that is a lot more intense. Darker. Got a sort of slight wheatiness to it, although there's obviously no wheat used in the, in this mash. It's all um, corn, a little bit of rye and malted barley. But it has a sort of a, a slight wheatiness. Soft rye, again, Darker, more treacle, um, honey, molasses, licorice, a um, bit of wood smoke, again some soft tannins. Mm. Yeah, it's got a kind of, yeah, it, got, it has got a bit of a nuttiness to it. A sort of kind of walnut shell nuttiness. Um, and it's definitely kind of as we've progressed along these three you can certainly get more wood character um, and and more grip so some dark chocolate again this is not it's kind of I think this is easier on the nose than, than the one from floor number five but it's still really intense and really you you get the impression that there's there's a lot of bitterness in there 
although you can't really smell the bitterness, I know that sounds a bit peculiar, um, but it has that feeling that, you know, there's a, there's, it's going to be pretty dry and pretty intense on the palate. And Although in saying that, there's, there's some lovely sort of treacly kind of sweetness there, but, but certainly the wood is very drying, it's very um, dominant. Uh, uh, over the, uh, the that sort of like treacle sweetness kind of character, so hmm. getting a little bit floral now, um, sort of almost kind of kind of whiskey aromas kind of coming out, sort of slightly higher toned spirit character. Um, hmm. I mean that is just that is really really complex. Um, yeah, there's a, a lot going on there. It has to be said. Mm. Yeah, that's bitter. Woohoo, woohoo, lots of bitter chocolate on the finish on that one. But again, it's got got plenty of body, plenty of the sort of treacly molasses kind of character um, to kind of like balance up against all that. Um, oh, wow, that is intense. That is really very, very good. Um, yeah, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of orange possibly. Um, again, some, some walnuts shell, um, licorice, uh, dark toffee, you know, and soft spice, quite gentle spice, but bitter spice as well, um, and that has that intensity, like I said, you can feel the oak is, is really gripping into that, but um, certainly there's plenty of sweetness to kind of counterbalance that, and it's actually pretty impressive, I could quite happily drink that, it has to be said, so, um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's impressive. Okay, so let's sum this little tasting up. Well, I think what it showed to me was that the, the hypothesis, the theory uh, about heat uh, and the positioning on warehouse floors is, 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 is obvious. I think that, that we can certainly say that the, um, the bottling on floor number nine certainly had a lot more oak character, a lot more bitter tannins, um, and... It's obviously because it's matured quicker. It's picked up the oak tannins a lot quicker than um, certainly the uh, bottling from floor number one, which in essence was actually very, very nice, very easy drinking, pleasant bourbon. And when you think about it, that most whiskey dis distilleries, most whiskey warehouses, or certainly uh, those that tend to have dunnage warehouses, don't have too many floors. They might have one or two maybe three uh, and so you're going to get less of that sort of like floor variation you might obviously get variations from the positioning within the the actual warehouse uh, itself um, you're always going to get sort of hot points cold points things like that uh, and as we know single casks can mature quite differently even though they're actually physically sat next to one another but i, I think this experiment does actually sort of show that the aging on the different floors in these big American warehouses has a very profound effect um, on the actual spirit. Like I said, first floor spirits obviously got a nice, easy, calm, uh, sort of maturing uh, environment and obviously going up, getting hotter, uh, getting more wood character. It's obvious. It's kind of like... Um, like I said, the, the, the fact is that these are, in essence, a snapshot of um, elements of a finished product, um, where number one, floor one, you could quite easily drink, uh, and probably even floor number nine, which is a bit harder going, but certainly has some richness, um, uh, which I'm guessing is probably sort of like the development of sort of um, oxidation, that kind of thing. But... And floor number five, the one in the middle, just seems to be a little bit hard work. That the spirit might is possibly a little bit oilier, 
um, the tannins have gripped a little bit too much and there's not enough sweetness and treacleness um, and um, evolved maturation kind of character just to sort of like balance up that uh, that tannin so um, so there you go I think I think this has just been a really interesting um, experiment and um, you know I I'd like to say big thank you to the whiskey magazine for sending me the samples to taste uh, back in what was it July and um, incidentally talking about that I've been sent another load of uh, samples which will appear in uh, the next uh, edition or of the of the magazine I think it's um, number 124 or something like that so keep an eye out for that uh, that copy of the magazine which will probably be out um, in the next couple of months I think um, and uh, yeah that's that was great fun so yeah a big thank you to the whiskey magazine for these these samples and um, that's pretty much about it for this afternoon so uh, uh, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the show I think it's been you know a really interesting look at sort of component parts um, so to speak so um, all that's left to say is uh, good drumming and good afternoon.